Happy Friday to every single last one of you out there in internet land. What's up, people? We good? We had a great week. I hope so. We put literally probably over 100 people through uh, Kill Jaden this week. Fucking tremendous, mate. Tremendous. Solid week. Solid week. Oh, look at all that. Look at all that. That's a Friday afternoon, is it not? We got the fan blowing. Can you hear it? I'm not sure. Can you hear this? <laughs> Tell me if you can hear this. This is the only plug that's left. All the plugs are gone, man. All the plugs are gone. Like, can you hear that? I hope not. <coughs> I hope not. You got no more game time? <gasps> Pay close attention over the next few days. Maybe I can help out with that. Mm, maybe I could be your man. Can't hear it? Awesome. That's tremendous. That's wonderful. I hope you've all had a great week. I've had a, t a storming week. We were off to Argus today. Argus got all its extra content. Got a video coming out on that. We went down. We tried out them new mounts that are like light golems. Which have fucking machine guns and flamethrowers in them. And they have wings that pop out of them. And all that kind of stuff. We've been in space. What a week. What an absolutely awesome week. Really good. Just so happy with how things are going. And of course, it's two weeks until PreachCon. Two weeks. I'm going to be meeting 250 of you guys coming down to my carnival land. Where we're going to be having some goddamn fun. We're going to be doing it. Yes, indeed, indeed. Uh, but that's not it. Like, there's no web show tomorrow, obviously. Because we did one last week. Which we went through all the new armors. And we looked at all the new spell animations. And all that kind of stuff. That's on Twitch if you want to see it. Uh, on top of that, though. Tonight, it's late night with Emma. She's back. Hopefully, if one of my kids doesn't, like, smash his head open again. Uh, which happened before. But that's what's going on tonight. So, other than that, though. Today, we're going to crush some guilds. You up for it? Are you with me, team? We're going to destroy some guilds today. In really sad fashion. <laughs> in really sad fashion, we're going to destroy some guilds. Again. <laughs> Again. Yep, I'm up for it. I'm up for it. Let's break some guilds in two. It's kind of apt. A lot of people who've been coming into the chat recently and joining in in our raids that we run every day, pretty much, at the moment, uh, that will be coming to an end, though. We weren't going to do Tomb every day going forward. Uh, it kind of kills my soul after a little bit. Although, tanky kill Jaden, multiple classes, healing it and doing all that. We need to do some more healing, though. Um, the guilds have been falling apart. Interesting. Interesting. Have your guilds fallen apart? I, I do kind of want to know what's happening there. Because the tomb ain't that difficult. It's pretty tough, but it's not that difficult. It's not that difficult. Our guild's doing host and then has got mistress when it does pick up. But a lot of guilds... Well, not, I don't know. Is it a lot of guilds or is it like a part of the community? Is it summer? Is it summer? It's like... Bro... <laughs> <laughs> it's hot outside, dude. I am done. I'm done. I don't want to fucking raid, man. I don't want to raid. Yeah, but there's seeps of people out there. Our guild lost three druids in one day. Three druids in one day. Don't let your raid team date each other. That makes it sound like three of them are dating each other. Two and a one. Yeah? Two and a one. Mr. Spock. Kind of. Two and a one. Uh, so we're recruiting healers. If you want to come and play with me, you can do that. You can do that. We need some, we need some bears and trees and shit and all that kind of good stuff. Anyway, before we destroy all the guilds, let's get cooked. <laughs> let's get cooked. Um, mm. Now, this one is asking for your opinion. And we do like the drama stories where they go, audience, did I do the right thing? So we're going to entitle this one, because he hasn't titled it, Should I Examine My Life? Because that is in the opening sentence. Should I examine my life? Should I? Should I? Should I? Should I take a step back, get some perspective on things, and see what's going on? Because that might be a good idea. Uh, we'll do the names as we go through, because they're not listed at the beginning. I've got, I have many opinions, and I am more than willing to share them with you, Mike. Mike, let me share my opinion with you, because I think you're going to want it. All right, let's go, let's go. Oh, sorry, I know. I know you want to get started. But I just want to say, this is ridiculous, but the amount of people who have been listening to Drama Time on SoundCloud in the last two weeks, SoundCloud got in contact with us straight away and were like, who are you? Let us support you in some way. Because, awesome. Well played, all you guys. Doesn't matter to us. Doesn't matter to us whether you watch it on YouTube or SoundCloud or whatever. We don't mind. Uh, but you guys, like, nailed it, like, straight away. It's like, yep. In fact, I missed the SoundCloud link for about two minutes on the last drama video on YouTube. People were like, where the fuck is the SoundCloud link, dude? <laughs> where the fuck is the link? Dude, where is it? 
And so look out for some SoundCloud stuff from us. Hopefully we can do some th work with them and see what we can get going on there. All right then. Hey, Preacher, Ghosty. Sup? And chat and YouTube later. This is getting crazy now. We're going to have like a list of 12 names. Here's a tale of mine I wanted to share about an awkward couple of months of my life during Warlords of Draenor. At the peak of my raiding days, as I, as I write this, I realize that you've read two other stories of mine. And maybe I should examine my life. Maybe, maybe, maybe. It all starts with the Fire Mage during Blackrock Foundry, right? Going all that way back. For those who don't recall or weren't around, the viable specs for mages back then were Arcane for single target or Fire for Cleave. With Fire set bonus being absolutely bonkers. Our guild had just downed Black Hand on Mythic. First on the server. We were happily dealing out the Black Hand mount to our raiders week after week. Everything was great. It was during this time that I was getting, getting a decent reputation for being a good fire mage. Yeah? I'm on the tits. I know how to do double ignite. I'm pretty much god at this point. People were always comparing logs and kill videos to see how they could improve by taking note of what others did that were ahead. So I was starting to get some attention. There was another guild on the server that was just getting into Mythic around this time. And all their members were contacting various guildies of mine, asking, how the fuck do we do this, boss? Shame on you. Shame on you. Shame whispering other gills. Can you got any advice for this? Like, uh, like the kind of advice I'm looking for is how did you do it from start to finish? You know, any tips like that? Like, anything you've got in that way of advice? Like, how did you deal with every single mechanic? That'd be nice. That'd be nice. If you just, 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 just whisper me about it. No, 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 just a little bit. Just a little bit of help. I don't want it all. I just want the whole, the whole, the whole strategy. Can I see your video? Can I see? Your, can you do commentary on it? Commentary on it. Is it every point of view? I need that. I need that. When I was getting contacted by one of their mages, I was taken aback because this was the first time anyone in WoW had asked me for advice and to teach them the ways of the mage. They wanted me to show them my fire rotation, how to double combustion by double inferno blasting. While everyone in my guild was ignoring these people due to, during this time and believing that they were super hot. Hmm. <laughs> Yeah, that guy whispers me all the time. Yeah. It's because I'm so fucking good. No, I don't reply to him. Why? Because I'm me. You should know if I'm so good. If I'm so good that you need to whisper me, I ain't going to reply, mate. Yeah? I'm too fucking good. That's why you're whispering me. To try and get some of my presence. Some of my attention. Not replying, mate. Not replying. Not doing it. But for me... I decided it couldn't hurt to show someone what's up. No, this was during WOD downtime. So there wasn't much to do. Did anybody ever have any downtime in Worlds of Draenor? Anybody? The mage who wanted help was Cola. <laughs> no. <laughs> There's no downtime in WOD. <laughs> First time I've heard of it. <laughs> I was really busy. Oh, God. The things that I got up to. So busy. Cola added me on BattleTag. Cola was a she. She linked me her logs and kill videos for her guilds on Heroic. It was immediately apparent that she was not playing fire. It's the first thing I noticed. It's the first thing I noticed is that when you wanted me to help you with your fire mage, you were casting frost bolts. Now... The first step <laughs> towards being a good fire mage is to respect a fire, right? Yeah, I know. Now you're on the right road, right? Now we're getting there. She was bottom of the meters as a result. Additionally, she wasn't using good talents, specs into good stuff. I took this as an opportunity to test my own patience and willpower, right? All right. And began showing Cola the basics. This took place over time. She was linking me slightly better logs each week. Eventually, her guild managed to down Gruel, and she was praising me for her success. I really didn't think too highly of myself since I wasn't comparable to the top mages around by a long shot, but it didn't stop her. A couple of weeks passed, 
by where we didn't get together to practice and I was getting pretty bored with my experiment and her lack of progress. <laughs> uh, well, she was messaging me over and over and over every raid night and during my mythic clears as well. I'm not the kind of person who's good at telling someone to go and fuck off. So I tried to be nice while replying less and less and less. One day, however... Cola messaged me saying she wanted to talk on Skype and have me evaluate her and a guildie during a pug run. Hmm. I decided I'll go ahead and I'll do it. Because at the time, it was one of those days where I was carefully examining the interior of my garrison. Maybe I should move the salvage yard over there. Hmm. No. Nope. Got it right the first time. Just going to leave it there. Yeah. I wonder if my followers are back then. Nope. No, they're not. <sighs> Let's play some alts. <laughs> Let's play some alts. <laughs> when I joined the call, she was in it with one other guy. She giggled suggestively when I hopped in and started acting very sultry when I spoke up. The other guy sounded like really weirded out by this. <laughs> the fuck just happened to Cola? As she spoke though, my retarded male instinct took over. <laughs> His normal brain just like leaked out of his ear and the dick brain just took its rightful place on the seat of the throne. I got this, says the balls. I, you go over there. I got this. This is my time. You go over there, all right? When she laughed, I really, really liked it. And I started enjoying her attention now that I had heard her voice. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's a girl laughing at the things I'm saying. Uh, I like it. The other guy in Skype eventually just left. <laughs> saying he had something else to do. So now it was just me and Cola. The pug run ended and where I normally would have logged out and gone to sleep, because it was late. I decided instead to get to know her. What a plan. <laughs> eh, I got another few minutes left in me. It's alright. It's alright. Let's see what's going on. It was clear after about an hour of talking that she was into me. I wasn't sure I was into her. <laughs> it's just, you know what it says here? Especially after seeing her play. It's less like... You sound great. You sound... You know what you sound like? You sound like you smell good. You do. You sound like you smell good. But you're so shit at WoW. So bad. But you just... You, just, you sound really good. <laughs> you sound really good. <laughs> you're just so shit. I don't know what to do. Uh, but I was definitely interested in continuing our correspondence now. She started talking about things she liked to do, like taking care of her pets. Swimming at her school. And volleyball. I know all these things. Oh yeah, swimming's fucking well good. You males depress me. Listen, girls. Right? Shut up. It's instinctive, right? It's insti if it wasn't for us wanting to fuck anything... Literally, at some points, that can's going down in a minute, right? <laughs> There'd be no population. There'd be no world. You owe it all to us men spreading our seed. Yeah? As far and as wide as we can. Gracing the world with our ointments. <laughs> right? You, you, you should be blessed, girls. It's not our fault. It's caveman stuff. You can't get rid of it. You can't retrain us. You can't retrain us, you can try, but you won't be able to because we'll see a pair of tits and it'll all go out the window. It will. It will. I'll be a cook for ten minutes until the porno comes on and I'll be rubbing one out like the rest of the lads. Don't you judge me. I just need to pop off. Why won't you let me pop off? I just want to pop, pop off. It's nature, baby. <laughs> let it happen. <coughs> <laughs> Truth is being told. Get educated, right? Get educated. Fucking hell. At least I'm honest about it. I like boobs. I like them. I don't know why. I always have since I was a kid. I see them and I go, that's nice. 
I like them. I like the way they move. The jiggliness. I don't, it's, just, it's good stuff. We're into it. Thumbs fresh. Anyway. Yeah, we're simple. We're totally simple. Cook us dinner. Show us some boobs. We're happy forever. We're just done. We'll be happy all, all day. All day. Okay. <laughs> so he's interested in her. <laughs> Over the next few days, we started talking more and more on Skype and chatting when we weren't on call throughout the day. Obviously, we stopped giving a shit about the mage stuff. It was never about the mage stuff, right? She can't play. Wow, we know it. She's using one of them fucking Nostromo pads or whatever the fuck it's called with a glove on. A glove. It just progressed the dirty stuff. I kind of want to mention, just for giggles... Just for giggles, that during this time, she was kicked from her raid team for her bad performance. <laughs> but she didn't care anymore, and I only found out after. She never even told me. We kept tight day after day until finally something changed. She wanted a nude from me. I'd never taken a dick pic before. But she offered to do a trade. <laughs> Bastard. <laughs> Fuck, I do want that picture. I do. I want it. <laughs> but dick pics are rubbish. <laughs> How do I do it? Is it comedy? Do I get a boner? Do I do a semi-chub and say it's limp? What do I do? I don't know. It needs to be a warm day. It's, it's cold at the minute. I, don't know. I started thinking about it. I decided on a strategy. I decided on a strategy. We've got a strategy. We've got a rate. Let's think of it like raining. What are the mechanics of the dick pic? And how do we count them? Let's go. I had heard in passing from a friend... Whereby, I suggest, okay, we're going to work our way up to it. I suggest we start with the top only and progress down lower. Classic male idea, we're going to get some boobs, right? <laughs> Look, I'll tell you what, we'll, do fa we'll, we'll start at the top and work down, right? Faces, torso, and you have to say torso so it sounds like you're thinking about the male chest. And then we'll work our way down after. Mmm, solid. Very good plan. Essentially, no one cares about a shirtless guy while simultaneously boobs. Kohler agreed. She had some hesitation and we paused to take each picture and then send them over. Upon opening the JPEG, I realized mistakes were made. <laughs> this double click spells my future. <laughs> spells my future. <laughs> the mental image I had created of Cola, I somehow expected like somebody in a, a it's, it's, it's described in the story as a a fit athletic type top were misguided. I don't want to come across as a superficial asshole. But let's just say it was a no. Upon closer inspection in the mirror she was facing, I saw a snake cage on a ledge. I asked in the cheeriest fake tone I could marriage, manage, Do you own a snake in your bathroom? She said, Yep! His name is Riddle, after Voldemort in Harry Potter. I physically facepalmed IRL. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Toilet snake. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> no. No, 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 no. Just wait, just wait, just wait. Just wait. It's so good. It's so good, right? I physically facepalmed IRL, which made a loud slapping noise. And her voice suddenly went down to the sultry tone again. She said, hmm, is that how it is? And how do we go lower? She said. I realized instantly that she thought the sound implied I was in fact trying to pop off to her picture. Bastard. <laughs> That quickly as well. It was the snake that took him over the edge, she thought, right? Now she's going to get weird with the snake. Because he asked about the snake 
then the slap, it's probably the snake that's really kicking him into high gear at this point. So let's get weird with the snake. We can put the snake around our neck. We can do all sorts of crazy stuff, right? We can get wild with this snake. It's fucking python, y'all. I quickly made up an excuse that my roommate had just come back and logged off before he caught me. I had to stop talking to her. She messaged me every day, but I didn't know what to say. I knew that she thought that I was jerking off to her picture. I felt too awkward to tell her that I wasn't interested, and yet I was so turned off that I couldn't think of what I would say if I ever did talk to her. After a few days, I just apologized for not being able to talk, and I said that school's getting extremely serious all of a sudden, and I don't have time to talk in World of Warcraft. <laughs> But aren't you playing WoW right now? Just watching my followers in the garrison just in case, you know what I mean? I'm, I'm, I'm actually studying. But you're in a dungeon. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> like school is really busy, like I say. So I don't think I'm going to be able to type in WoW chat anymore. Like, you know? Got homework in that. <laughs> so... Anyway, <laughs> finally, I woke up on my raid night and I realized that enough was enough. I wasn't going to duck out and I just had to be straightforward. I have to tell the truth. I messaged her and she instantly replied as if not even waiting for my message to arrive. I swallowed my nerves and told her directly that I don't want to speak with her anymore. I said I was uncomfortable and felt like... <laughs> I was uncomfortable and I really felt like I needed a more serious relationship that I could be steady with instead of an internet one. He played the relationship card. He's got to be straightforward and honest. I just don't see us being married in the next few weeks. So I think we should just stop talking altogether. And that's what it is. That's the way it's gone down. I can't talk to you anymore because... I don't see this getting to be like the best thing of all time. And that's the truth of the situation. All right. Pretty good. Pretty good. I swallowed his nerves and told a flat out lie. At this point, she called me on Skype. And when I answered, she started crying. Oh, no. She said that she had planned to be my girlfriend for the longest time. Oh no! Oh! Disaster! And if I was unsure, she would meet up with me if it meant that we could eventually get serious and that she liked the idea of having a steady relationship. And if I just gave her a chance... Oh! <laughs> Fuck, man. <laughs> You played the relationship card. Correct. You brought the word relationship into it. You done fucked up, son. You done messed up, A.A. Eh, Ron. You fucked it right up. I just hung up. Removed her from my friends list and blocked her. I tried to forget about it. <laughs> and then he played the guy card. <laughs> and then he played the guy card. No, no, axe. Boom, boom. Kill it. Kill it with fire. Kill it with fire. And if she ever speaks to me again, I'll just pretend like I don't remember. I don't remember. Who? Who are you? Cola? What? No. <laughs> no. Not me. Uh, must be somebody who had my game name. I just rolled this character. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Somebody else spoke to me as well. Apparently the guy who used to have this account, or oh, this game name, was like a total dick. But it's not me, though. All right? Good. Okay, we're good. I saw her in game, in passing. She didn't speak to me. Her guild cleared Mythic eventually, but she wasn't welcome. Eventually, my own guild fell apart and I applied for and joined another guild on the server. So I never saw her again after that. I really never told any of my friends this because it's a pretty awkward story about my mistakes. But I figure you guys would love to hear about it. Thank you for reading my story. Remember, don't think with your dick. Now, that's the end of the story. Our opinion. Friends, where were the mistakes made? Girls and boys, come on. Let's go both rounds this time, yeah? Where were the mistakes made? Very beginning. You knew what she was like before you heard that voice, my friend. It goes all the way back. All the way back to when you decided to stick around and have that long conversation about pets and volleyball and swimming. 
That's where the mistakes were made. It was before the nudes. It was before the nudes. He was planning to leave before then. And on that note, planning to leave. We're about to step into the world of somebody else who is about to make a catastrophic mistake. So I need an edgy as fuck guild name. Edgy as fuck. And the GM is going to be Master Tomb. Master Tomb. Master Tomb. Uh, we are going to have Alex. Scion. Uh, oh no, Scion's not in this one. I only need two names for this one. Uh, it's Master Tomb and Alex. Right, we're having... Sure, with the X Preach X. That's not fair. That's not fair. <laughs> Unlimited Agony. Love that. <laughs> Unlimited Agony. And what else? Writing with Blood. Oh, that's perfect. Oh, nice. That is awesome. I like that. I like that a lot. Writing with Blood. <laughs> Writing with Blood. Okay. <sighs> I could tell, I knew before, I didn't read the name of the sender of this, because usually they're lies, right? They're usually called, like, preachersbutthole dot, at gmail.com, you know, shit like that. Um, but I knew this was written by a girl, <laughs> because at the start it has, like, asterisks and asterisks and little advice, a heart and a smiley face. It's like, you can replace all the names in the story if you, set, if you use the replace function in Word. Thank you. I know that. But it is actually slower than me just trying to do my job correctly and remember. So let's see if I get it right. He says smugly. <laughs> he says smugly. Hello, Preacher Ghosty, if he's there. Oh, what up? And Lady Preach and thy troll chat. Well, you just lost some support. Trolly. These guys. Fat. Fat ass. Bubbly. Bubbly. I come, rude, <laughs> rude, I come from the majestic land of Canada. I have a story for you about a guild that became, officially, by a decree, semi-hardcore. <laughs> a semi-hardcore friends guild, where having fun matters and pugs are wankers, right? <laughs> We're not a troll chat. Fuck that bitch. <laughs> not even a real place, though, mate. Not even real. Being a lady gamer, I'm sure it's impossible not to have any drama time stories. I don't think we've ever had one from some of the girls that I can see right now. I think. I think. I think. I think there's some of the girls in the, who've never sent us in a tale. I have a lot. However, I never sent any in being worrisome that whomever I tell a story about will know it's me. Mmm. Well, they'll definitely know it's you once I post your RL docs you. Yeah? Get doxed on. Just saying. Finally, I said fuck it. I have a story that will take you back to October 2015. Where are we? Oh, I haven't changed the title, have I? Well spotted. Uh, Semi-hardcore. Friends Guild. Where are we in October 2015? I could do my job correctly. I think I would have remembered Warlords of Drain or Hellfire Citadel. HFC has been out for about two months and I was starting a new office job after not being able to find work as an apprentice welder. Lady welder, like in uh, Flashdance? Yeah. 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 To continue my apprenticeship. That sucks, though, that you couldn't continue your apprenticeship. That genuinely fucking sucks. My boyfriend and I moved in with his parents due to making less cash monies. I had a lot more spare time due to not working 10-hour days anymore and was bored out of my goddamn mind. I hadn't played WoW since the launch of Mists of Pandaria, and I quit due to both my guild falling apart from drama, of course, and my server basically being a shithole. One day at work, I watched the YouTubes and came across you. I started watching your videos, Preacher, to see what WoW was like right now. Might I add, I started playing WoW since the launch of 2004. Yeah, she kicking it old school at the prime age of 13. How old is she now, lads? Context. She's 38, Michael. <laughs> that doesn't sound right at all. <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha. 
Oh, I found a picture of you. Yeah. Confirm deny. Is that you? Because that, if I type lady welder, that's what comes up. Confirm deny. Don't know. Don't know. Maybe. Maybe. Just giving some context to the lads here. I have experienced the glory of all the expansions with regular breaks. I knew about garrisons, but I was under the impression... Are you ready? Are you ready? I was under the impression it was a badass fortress, which was entirely customizable. Didn't we all? Didn't we all? Didn't we all? And then we saw what it was. Damn. Watching your videos, though, made me miss raiding pretty hard. Finally, I said enough was enough, and instead of I humping your videos, I'll experience it for myself. I played a Resto Shaman since TBC, but I decided to give another class a go. Another direction for our girl. Which direction will she go, lads? Lesbian. Huh. A plot twist, to be sure. <laughs> and Wrath, I was always jealous of healing druids. <laughs> so I made my decision that I will become a tree. I already had one at 90 from Mop, so I could experience Wad right off the bat. I reached 110 quickly and got geared the best I could without raiding. LFR was dog shit. I was, it says that in the story, by the way. <laughs> I was lonely and eager to do some raiding and with a guild. After watching your videos on how to find a raiding guild in Wad, I went to the forums. But all the guilds were looking for X out of 13 heroic HFC or higher with a certain eye level. I was obviously 0 and 13 normal. With a shitty item level. I looked long and hard, but was continuously discouraged. Now this blows my mind, right? Right when I was certain I would not find a guild, I finally came across a guild by the name... Oh, what did we pick? What was it? Right in blood. No, this is unlimited agony. Oh my god. <laughs> I finally came across a guild by the name of Unlimited Agony. Oh. On Twitter... How do you find a guild on Twitter? I don't know. Is there like a guild recruitment tweet machine? They were looking for a healer. A resto druid. I did explain to the GM who went by the name of Master Tomb that I haven't raided since the start of Mr. Pandaria. I am undergeared, but have faith in me, Master Tomb. I have the skills. I know what I'm doing. I've raided before. I got this. Unlimited Agony were welcoming with open arms. They were very kind. They crafted me gear and took me along to their normal farm raids. Now, <laughs> my intention, if I'm being completely honest, in joining this guild <laughs> wasn't the best of intentions. I went in with one singular mindset to get as much gear quickly as I could and then fuck off to a better guild. This guild was clearly not the best. <laughs> they certainly were not as dedicated to the game as I was. They were a friends guild. All the officers and Master Tomb were friends IRL. However, they weren't that bad. They did have over six officers for their 12-man team. But only two of them, plus Master Two, made decisions on anything. This guild almost also had the most female players I had ever played with, let alone in the same guild. This made me really comfortable, as I was as I was normally the only girl, and it was great making friends with some gamer ladies that were not complete bitches. Once they felt I was in a good spot for heroic, which was pretty much the first week, we went to heroic too. I was happy, making new friends, started to get too comfortable in the guild. It was at this early juncture, maybe two weeks in, that they had changed my mind. And I was going to stick around in this guild. One day, however... <laughs> One day, however... I joined the raid. And there was a bunch of other folks that were in our raid group. 
and I was extremely confused. They were all from a different guild called Writing with Blood. One of the rules in our guild that Master Tomb very clearly stated once in a while was we do not pug ever. Which is why I was confused. Pugs were assholes, he explained to me in Whisper. He then went on, though, to say that for better loot, we raid with another guild, and they had just come back from a little break. This, of course, was my first red flag. Not only was this other guild just as geared as I was, which is badly, they were bad at players. And we changed to personal loot on purpose. This was the agreement. So all tier, trinkets, and weapons were now completely random on who got them to keep it fair. Yeah? We'll just use personal loot to keep it fair. Yes. Great. I didn't fret, however, because I honestly don't care that much about gear. I just wanted to kill the bosses and the gear will come later. Now, with this other guild with us... <laughs> We started wiping on farming content. Halfway through the run, we randomly lost an amazing dis priest, and I never knew why. I was now on top of the healing meters with my cat Lego ring, and felt much better about myself. So much so that I decided, at the end of the week, to pug Heroic Archimon to try for the Grove Warden Mount. A lot of the pugs asked for the achievement and the Lego ring. I would just link the ring, and success. I got into a group. This pug went so smooth, we killed him the first pull, and I got a mount. I was ecstatic, and honestly, I showed it off to the guildies whenever I got the chance. A few weeks later, one of the healers recruited a friend that she used to raid with in Kata, and he was a death knight. He was called Alex. Alex seemed fake as fuck. I wasn't sure about him from the first moment I met Alex. He just seemed too nice, you know? It's weird. It's weird nice. However, I put on my female fake face. And was always nice back. Oh, it's great to see you, Alex. Yes. Isn't it? Isn't it? Who the fuck is this guy? Fucking a-hole, man. <laughs> fucking a-hole dude <laughs> oh yes no no I'm glad you're here it's really good <laughs> it's really good <laughs> one day Alex was online with me and I found out that he was a student and he paid for his sub with wow gold he struggled sometimes just barely reaching the right amount before his monthly sub ended I felt bad in ward I had made myself a wow millionaire so I decided I was going to help Alex out. By telling him some tips to make gold. <laughs> I fucking love this. <laughs> I fucking love this. I don't know, right? But this seems like the most girl way of dealing with it. Because <laughs> we couldn't be asked with that. We'd just throw him a bit of gold, right? And say, well, that's my contribution, dude. Don't worry about it. I've got millions. It's no big deal. Where she went... Well, I'm a millionaire. And he went, really? And she went, yeah. This is how I did it. Now you go do that too. <laughs> okay. All right. Fine, I suppose. <laughs> Get, you know, just one month of not having to farm the shit out of a load of gold would have been nice. You know, just to get myself set up, man. Just, just like a loan, I suppose, is what I'm trying to say. Well, never mind then. Okay. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you. <clears throat> <laughs> Okay, <laughs> where was I? Because that fucking line is so good. There we go. <clears throat> so I decided to help him out and gave him all the tips I used to make gold. And then we bonded though. And I got to know Alex quite well. Once we got my new friend Alex geared up, he ended up being one of our top DPS. Brackets, let's be honest though, not hard as a DK. Just still fucking tossing mad shade. shade. It's just endless shade, because he's still fake as fuck, in her opinion. <laughs> he wanted the Grove Warden Mount also, so I helped him get it with a pug by linking my achievement while queuing together. We got the mount for him, and I was so stoked. Our guild took forever to get Heroic Archie down, and, 
<laughs> that it took 10 months for the whole guild to get its achievement. One month before the Legion pre-patch. I didn't care, though. I was excited for Legion. Suddenly, during the Legion pre-patch, Master Tomb decided to call a guild meeting on Vent. Attendance, in his own caps lock ridden way, was absolutely required. A hundred percent. We're going serious into Legion now. Mandatory. If you had any intention whatsoever of raiding with us in Legion, which therefore includes the writing with Blood Guild, <laughs> then you must fucking be there. You must be there. This is what real raid guilds do, said Master Tomb. <laughs> Did you hear that somewhere? Did you? <laughs> raid guilds have meetings before new expansions to talk about things. It was meeting day. All the officers were in vent. Everyone from our guild was there. No one from writing with blood showed up. <laughs> and then Master Tomb said in his strong and fearless voice, it's all right. It's okay. Writing with blood didn't make it. We'll just tell them what we decided later. I don't want to start any drama with them. Right? It's fine. It's fine. Universally, the whispers started. What the fuck? You gave us a seriously hard time that if we did not come to this meeting that we weren't going to get any chance to raid in Legion but an entire guild that we raid with didn't show up, not one single member, and we're not going to talk to them about it because we don't want to start drama. Great. Wonderful. Looking strong there, Master Tomb. Looking strong. <laughs> Looking strong. Stand strong, dude. Second red flag for sure. The meeting was about our raiding in Legion. They were going to start taking things very seriously. Officers were going to start using a spreadsheet to keep track of attendance and there would only be a certain amount of allowance if you didn't show up to raids which was then followed up with the line but if IRL happens that's totally fine no one in the guild understood we had to have 100% attendance pretty much but if we didn't turn up it was totally fine <laughs> we were so confused that he was trying so hard to be like a normal guild master <laughs> <laughs> it's all good being high and mighty, high and mighty, but then you realise that you're not really that good, so you can't really pick and choose your members that much yet. One day, maybe, but not now. There was also going to be a gear requirement, which will be added to the spreadsheet. They were also going to start analysing logs after every raid. Mm hmm. Okay. <laughs> lastly, no, second to lastly. We are going to use a DKP system. And more importantly, Master Tomb had decided to change the title of the guild on WoW Progress from casual to semi-hardcore. He's been thinking about this for quite some time. He thinks it's time to make that jump. <laughs> fucking madman <laughs> what a madman what a maniac you are master 2 what a maniac fucking mad lads man <laughs> I asked master 2 one question during the do you have any questions phase of the meeting <clears throat> excuse me master cook how are we supposed to use DKP if we have to raid with another guild because personal loot goes on Master Tomb said he had decided once and for all. Are you ready for another decision? Are you ready for Master Tomb to drop some fucking bombs on this bitch? He had decided that he was going to tell them that they had to join our guild and merge. So that this would no longer be a problem. On his throne of blood in his castle of skulls, Master Tomb has made the decisions. And these decisions will not be taken lightly. We are now semi-hardcore. And we will use Master Looter. There will be DKP. And there will be logs. 
Stand tall, stand proud. One country united under God. Hail Hydra. <laughs> Hail Hydra. <laughs> I was excited. I was, I was excited. The way the guild cleared HFC was borderline pathetic, but I stayed because I liked everyone, so I was glad they would be taking raiding more seriously. This is what I wanted as a player. Legion launch. I pulled an all-nighter with my bloodshot dry eyes and bobbing head. Sucking a dick? You can't write that as a girl. I'm sorry, there's just some things you can't write. <laughs> you can't write that. Well, she's sucking a dick, mate. I miss that. You can't say you've got bobbing head. <laughs> You can't write that. You can't. Chunking a beat. <laughs> you can't. You know what it means to us. It's not that we're dirty minded, but you know what it means to us, right? You know what it means. All right. I pulled it all lighter with my bloodshot dry eyes and weary head. I capped myself on day one. <coughs> After expecting lag, disconnects, and shit wilderness, and Wallows of Draenor, where a preacher who plays WoW for a living goes to the cinema instead of playing the game on launch day, the way, the, <laughs> the way it had been in the past, it wasn't like that. It was a great experience. Didn't have to deal with any of the problems from Wallows of Draenor. I geared up as quick as I could with world quests, mythic dungeons, mythic plus was coming up. This was much talk in WoW community about gearing up with crafted items using the Obliterum Forge. But to unlock it, you needed one bracer of each type of gear. Well, behold, my resto shaman was a leather worker. And if I put the effort in, I could unlock and make two of the four bracers. I leveled up my shaman to 110, unlocked my bracers, and I farmed the shit out of crocodiles in High Mountain. And goats right by Nessingwary's retreat. I thought I was helping the guild. I made enough braces for the whole raid group. For everyone to unlock their forges. And be prepared for the upcoming Emerald Nightmare. No. 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 <laughs> Don't do that. No, <laughs> no, you just, you're, you're, you're lubing yourself, is what, you're just opening yourself up for abuse, man. Don't do that, don't do that. Oh my god. <sighs> Might I add that during this time when I was farming my ass off to help the guild, Master Tomb sat on his throne of blood and announced, bravely, boldly one might say, that writing with blood had said no. And we had to scrap our DK pieces. <laughs> they wanted to stay in their own guild. <laughs> oh man. Master Team, such bold plans. But such bold plans. Red flag number three. I was starting to get impatient and irked. I was putting so much effort into making braces for everyone, unlocking everything in alchemy on my druid and making sure I was at least 845 for Emerald Nightmare. Writing with blood, their raid team reached 110 a week before the Emerald Nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> They also, apparently, had decided as a guild that the Obliterum Forge was a cash sink and they refused to unlock their forges. Ever. <laughs> I like them. These guys are just getting carried and they don't give a fuck. They couldn't give a fuck about what your plans are. Fucking farming skaters for braces? Fuck you, man. No. Join your guild? No. No. Just, alright, we won't raid together anymore, but you need us, right? Bummer. Bummer. Raid night! I just want to interject here. Let me turn the character off for a second. <sighs> when was the big... Why did this happen? Right? This is a lesson. This is a real lesson. Life advice. Obviously, our lady, our good lady here, is gonna... It's, it's gonna end badly. We know that, right? <laughs> we know that right now. Um, <coughs> it's your fault. What did you tell us in the first page of this story? You knew this guild was nowhere near what you were for playing this game. Don't do it. 
Don't join a guild that has completely different drives to you. You rec you knew it. You knew it. You fucking knew it the day you joined that guild. It was supposed to be a stepping stone guild. And then you tried to apply how you play WoW to a whole bunch of people who do not play WoW that way at all whatsoever. And it ruined it for yourself. You don't want to do that. Anyway, back on. Raid night. I was the only member of the raid who had managed to make it past item level 830. And I was salty as fuck. We had quite a few people who during the first weeks of Legion had decided to swap classes. Two of the guild ladies didn't like priest healing anymore. <laughs> Fake. <laughs> One of them had switched over to DPS, another to Mistweaver. A whole bunch of other people had swapped classes. Being in a group filled to the tits in healers now only had three healers. Two of them who didn't regularly show up at all. And me. Who was on all the goddamn time. Our guild had one regular healer. So, being the courteous member of the raid team, I worded up Master Tomb. I went, yo, Master Tomb, I recommend that maybe we get ourselves a couple of flex healers, right? Just to balance out the team. We haven't got enough healers, really. It's kind of irregular, you know. We could do without a bit more consistency there. Master Tomb said we currently had four healers in the raid. There was no need to recruit any more. Making the big decisions is Master Tomb. Making those big decisions. No fucking about. No ifs, ands, or buts. Mr. Tomb knows what's going on. No. I have looked at our current raid. There's four healers in this raid. That means we do not need any more healer. Science. <laughs> Science. It's not an issue right at this second. It's all good. <coughs> we went into the Emerald Nightmare normal. We spent the entire week wiping our Nilgan off normal. <sighs> Can you imagine that? Can you imagine that though? That's happening, man. And that that's 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 why we do what we do over here in this because because you might end up in a situation where you're wiping on ilganoth normal for a week and that's not somewhere you want to be man that's not somewhere you want to be our problem was pretty obvious especially from my healing point of view whenever tentacles came out i would watch people literally run in circles but to be fair master tomb's call was to run with tentacles <laughs> so people just ran <laughs> like forest <Forrest> gump <laughs> tentacles up Run away with them all. <laughs> oh, these tentacles run in a circle. <laughs> I fucking love it, man. They're doing what they're told. The Raiders are doing what they're told, man. He said to run with the tentacles. So we ran. We ran and we ran and we ran. And we ran and the boss never died. Which was weird because we kept running. We kept on running and maybe he's going to die in a minute. Who knows, man? Who knows? Our Mistweaver monk kept complaining that monks were dog shit. <clears throat> and that people were always out of range. Yet every time I saw her dead body, she didn't realize that sometimes groups go left and right. <laughs> she was right inside the eyeball. <sighs> she managed to amass 60% overhealing on the meters, 30% through the fight, and then be dead. She'd specced as a tank healer, but would just spam renewing mist on everybody. <laughs> I was frustrated because other groups were passing us, right? But these were my friends. These were my friends. They were good people. They were funny. They were friendly. I didn't want to be mean and leave them with two healers. One that was always dead and another that had bad internet, right? Can't do that. I have to stay. Finally, we recruited when we reached, reached Heroic Emerald Nightmare and found a Havoc Demon Hunter, even though we already had seven melee. This lady... Who wants to be the Lady Demon Hunter? I think it's only mentioned him for a second. It can be... Uh, let's have Janie. Janie. 
Janie was a great person with great humor and we got along quite well. And she was quite skilled, so we did lots of Mythic Plus together. I found out that she was transgender and so then suddenly a lot of the boys stopped talking to her, which made her sad. Especially Master Tomb. We finished Heroic Emerald Nightmare before Nighthold came out and we were still lacking that other healer. I was to be given a new title at this point. A title specifically designed for me. <laughs> the title was, and I sh I'm going to copy paste this, right? You'll hear me not type on the keyboard because this is awesome. <laughs> healer watcher. <laughs> I want to be a healer watcher, don't you? I want to be a healer watcher. That sounds awesome. Master Tomb promised that this was to be my role. <laughs> this was not given any officer privileges, though. I was to be given officer duties, but not an officer. My job specifically was to watch the healers. <laughs> well, good. <laughs> I want that role. How did it go tonight? Pretty good. I watched them do all kinds of stuff. It was, uh, did my job, boss. Did my job. Mm -hmm. Why not healing officer? We don't need a healing officer. We just need someone to watch the healers. Right? <laughs> we just need someone to watch them. Just look at what they're doing. It's crazy. It's like a zoo. I said yes, so I could potentially help guide people to play better. I could do it! While still having fun. Janie, though, she said she was getting bored of the Demon Hunter. And since Master Tomb refused to recruit a healer, she would switch to the Resto Shaman. Now, Master Tomb was not happy about this. And I bet all you raiders out there can understand why. Because this is about to make the most sense out of anything we have said in the entire drama time of today. We cannot have a demon hunter switch to a healer because it's going to wreck our comp. I needn't remind you that our comp was nine melee and two ranged. <laughs> And we do not want to wreck our comp. We've got a solid synergy going on. And you're going to fuck it up. Don't do that. <laughs> I told her, look, we need you to heal. And because I had been given the role of healer watcher, I got to say yes to her being a healer. After all, <laughs> we, still, uh, we still needed the healer with the monk doing 60% overheal and then being dead. And our other healer was given a soul stone regularly for Croesus. We slowly cleared Nighthold Normal and started Heroic. Needing a Soul Stone on Croesus, though. That means beams. <laughs> and we were still raiding with... Writing with blood. But we were carrying them so hard. It was like John Cena trying to carry a vegetable. Only one of their guild had ever done a Mythic Plus. <laughs> but that was the Monk Healer. But she was doing so poorly that they couldn't single chest a nine even with our DPSs. They were geared badly, couldn't follow mechanics, including laser beams on Croesus, as I said. Around the time we started Heroic Nighthold, some of my good friends who I was in the guild with back in Cataclysm reared their ugly heads. They said they were going to start a pug Nighthold Heroic. And I was invited. It was a Friday. Raid days were already passed with the guild, so I said, yeah, what's the issue? It was great raiding with them again and brought back some fantastic nostalgia. With my friend laid, raid leading on his rogue, the giggly hunter whom I always tease about his grandfather taking a shotgun to a snapping turtle once on their lawn. Back in car. Let me read that again for you in case you missed it. I don't want you guys to miss out on this line. The giggly hunter whom I always tease about his grandfather taking a shotgun to a snapping turtle on their lawn one raid night back in Kata. Are we clear on what happened there? There was a snapping turtle on the lawn. Grandad goes and gets a shotgun. Grandad's having none of it. Grandad's Gra gangster. Grandad does not stand for snapping turtles. No, he does not. Not on his watch. 
If you're wondering why someone would do that, he was from Ohio. I hope that answers your question. <laughs> <laughs> we had so much fun, clued all the way to botanist and stopped there since the pogs couldn't the, the pugs couldn't get it quite right. It felt great having my old friends back and getting more gear since we killed more than three bosses in a single raid night, which I had not done for a long time. Janie talked to me one night and said that she might stop playing WoW and spend more time with her family. And I supported her with any decision. I finally stopped give stopped to give my own situation a thoughts. It had actually made me realise where I had ended up. I realized I was carrying the healing. I'm putting ridiculous effort into trying to get things done and geared so I can do better. The officers, including Master 2, made decisions without considering what the guild wanted. <laughs> then my three, my three friends from Cat told me they'll be bringing the old guild back and I'm more than welcome. This was it. This is what I was looking for. I said yes. And I'll switch over after telling my guild. Janie told the officers that she'll be leaving. The same night, I told the officers that I am leaving. Since I'm going to play with old friends and do harder content. Two, the two other healers left that night. The guild now had zero healers. <laughs> Master Tomb never replied. But we knew he was pissed. I serve a transfer, joined the guild, and ended up switching from healer to another old for the first time in my WoW career. I went guardian, main reason being motherfucking werebear, y'all. Can't wait to get our werebear next week. I geared up quickly and was already tagging Heroic Nighthold a week after switching. I enjoyed it and kicking myself for not doing it sooner. Since our guild was just six people, six people strong, we did a lot of pugging to get our Heroic Gul'dan kill. And two weeks after joining the guild, I got that kill. While the old guild Unlimited Agony died badly i saw they tried to do heroic triliax but they never made it <laughs> after i switched guilds i still had access to the discord since everyone but master tomb considered me still a part of the guild and a friend that I could be invited through battle swag from what i could see it was nothing but drama after i left including my friend alex he was voicing his concerns that raiding and only pugging our healers <laughs> This may be not the best idea. <laughs> Master 2! Excuse me. I just want to raise a concern I have. Perhaps as a raiding guild, it's not the best idea that we only use pug healers. I was going to throw it out there. You know, if you want to throw it back, you do that. It's totally fine. I just want to make sure that we're all on the same page. That perhaps that's not the best plan to be a raiding guild with, especially as we are now semi-hardcore. Just want to let it know. <laughs> Alex was getting impatient. He had seen me get my heroic kills so quickly. He said that they seemed like there was only three officers left, including Master Tomb, even though there were four other officers, and didn't even consider that other people would ever make any decisions. Not only that, but no one. No one else was voicing opinions about our raiding. They made him feel bad. He felt like it was a bully situation. And said that if he was so tryhard, he didn't need to be there. He's tryhard! We should get guild healers! He's a fucking tryhard. Fuck off, tryhard. What's next? Logs, you prick. Fuck you, buddy. I told him if he felt that way, come and join us, big boy. But he was hesitant because friends still left in the guild. Yeah, three out of ten no guild healers. <laughs> Semi-hardcore. <laughs> eventually alex did indeed join us but for unlimited agony the agony had come to an end that was the end now i have a 920 guardian druid i'm an officer of my guild i'm also recently single a oh, what up hey up boys Tats. never forget I'm also recently single. Where are we? Sorry, I'm totally confused now. Now you said that. And love tanking with the help of your tanking series, Preacher. Making me the way through the guild through Heroic Tomb of Sargeras. Uh, my ex fiance decided that drugs were more important than a future with me. Oh, can we get some feels bad pepes in the chat for that? That's terrible. That's bad. That sucks. Sorry about that. That sucks. Um, 
I haven't had this much fun in WoW since Kata with my friends. Lesson, friend guilds are fine. If done right. If things feel sketchy, they are sketchy and not all pugs and wankers. And also, know when you want more from the guild than what that guild's going to give you. Right? Know that in your heart that if you want more, you're never going to be happy. You're never going to be happy. Mm -hmm. You're never going to be happy. <laughs> Slap note, keeping it real though, before you get too excited, remember she's a female tank, not a healer. Clearly nasty. I don't believe that. I don't believe that at all. Ladies and gentlemen, that does bring us to the end of Drama Friday with wrecked guilds and all that good, delicious swag going on. Emma, hello, is going to be back in about three hours. Hi, mate. You got a sword? Good stuff. Looking good, mate. In about three hours with Late Night with Emma. Mm. Mm. Come here, buddy. What's your sword called? Oh, Lego. Lego. Mm, very nasty. Very nasty. Wave at the camera. Bye bye, everybody. We'll see you in a few hours. You're going to wave at the camera. Peace. Say peace. Peace, please. Peace, please. Yeah. No, you just go like this. Put some bass in it like this. Peace. Peace. <laughs> Fair enough. That'll do. Who's that? What's that stance about? You got an air guitar? You're going to rock out? <laughs> What's he doing? Do you like to party all day and every night? Yeah. <laughs> Power stance. All right, team. See you later. Bye bye. See who is that? Who is that? Yeah. Not you. It's you. Why have you got a microphone face? <laughs>